everyone and welcome to dinner. <laughs> the main course is about to be served. Now, I'm going to let Ryan start with the introductions this time around. And before we just do that, I want you guys to guess this map. And if you noticed in my appetizer of a game, um, the taskbar was actually on. So you guys could probably see the mini map. Hopefully you guys didn't realize that. But the taskbar is off. This map, can you guys guess it? Can you guys guess I'm turning the tilt in my map? It is long rail. So I'm hoping you guys will enjoy this. Now, no. Ryan... You're okay, wrong. whatever. Okay, Angel. Ryan, you can. Yeah, Ryan, you fix me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, today we get a game on Angerville, uh, despite the the French. What did I say wrong? My cohort over here. Well, it's, it's <laughs> you said Longra. Longra. This is Angerville. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> okay, Ryan, you start with the introductions on you. Go. All right, we have uh, All Noobs Are Here, which is actually uh, Ram Jim, who is a very popular 2v2 player. And on the other side, we have HQ I King, who apparently is also E King, which is a Korean player. Uh, supposedly, we, we chose this game just because it's supposed to be a little unconventional from the Panzer Elite side, and people are kind of getting bored of fast AC strats and everything of the sort. So, theoretically, we're not going to see any of that. So are we ready, Ryan? Sure. Okay, in five, four, three, two, one. And here we go, we have HQ King bringing down a barracks in front of his MG bunker. <laughs> okay, so quite a funny placement of the barracks right now. I'm not too sure about that because if, say, the Wehrmacht or the Panzer decide to be pesky and go for a base rush, they could actually get in around this fence, around his barracks, and around that MG. Um, I don't think that's very likely anyway, um, but, you know, just an interesting thing to note. So, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, we have... Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, old noobs are here. Um, he's going for the munitions point first rather than the strategic point, the cutoff point. So obviously I was thinking that he might have something else that's going to connect that point up, but it doesn't look like it. Well, uh, with the uh, with the Schwimmwagens and the Kettenkrat, classically you you don't pick up those those points as quickly as what you classically would. But um, what we're seeing is is one PG right to tier two with a G forty three upgrade. Um, Usually what you do with the Schwimm is you go out and cap your first medium or high point, and then your Panzergren, your first Panzergren squad would link that up with the strategic point. Kind of went backwards on that. It it pretty much ends up being a wash one way or the other. Okay, I just thought it was a bit strange because his uh, territory wasn't linked up straight from the beginning. I could understand saving time and having like uh, another squad like cap the cutoff point, but it was just a bit strange there. I mean, you know, you can see my understanding behind Sli it. Yeah, slightly odd. Ron Jim said he was playing from his laptop, so his micro was a little funky. Um, and just as a note, that MG bunker that he put the barracks in front of, you can actually get around that by following the edge of the map. And if you bring something to crush those fences, you can sneak into the back of the American player's base on Angaville fairly easily. So you guys see that fence, you can easily crush it, and there you go. Anything that's cr um, crush capable, so even Greyhounds and whatever else. And so we have... I've seen it done with Shrek. <laughs> even Shreks, that's right. You can even blow it up with um, Shreks and that. Um, now we have HQ King putting down some wire on this uh, cutoff point over here. Quite a smart choice because a lot of times people like to cut off the enemy on the south side just from this point alone. So fair enough. Good, good use of uh, barbed wire there. Yeah, and that's one of the defining characteristics of Angaville in general, is the ability to cut off your opponent by taking that one strategic point right outside of their base. That's right, so you guys, um, if you just look here, there's a strategic point over here and a strategic point over here that are very uh, main to cutting off um, your opponents. We have an IHT, an infantry half-track, coming out of Tier 2. Okay, 
So what kind of uh, strategy do you think the PE is going to employ? Well, this this kind of reminds me of like a 2PG, 2IHT strat. Um, the order's a little funky, but Jim again said he was being a little more experimental with it, which is, you know, completely alright. It's always good to see a new strat. I think it's kind of funny, like, I'm just looking at the Panzer Elite right now, and like, um, just been playing them recently, I was actually recommended by someone that I should uh, not go for the Gwer, the uh, little upgradable cool. guns, be um, and in and instead save up the ammunition to, uh, you know, just uh, in the in the future and upgrade something else. Well, the G43s are currently not as much of an upgrade as you'd really like them to be. That's one of the changes that they've made in the patch that uh, allowed them to shoot a little faster. Um, and as a result, it, it kind of makes a difference. We see the IHT here rolling up on these riflemen. Um, in concert with these Panzer guns, that's going to be a losing battle over time. I would say that the riflemen are in a very bad position right now. I mean, they're very, not capable whatsoever at long range combat. Um, the Panzer Elite definitely have the advantage right now, considering that they have that Guerra out and the infantry half track. I mean, in a very good position right now. And they could easily repair that infantry half track. Yeah, you certainly can, but uh, one of the things with the with the Panzer Elite is that, uh, you know, at this stage of the game, as soon as you've got enough in the way of firepower out on the American side, the Schwimmwagen capping is going to be a little riskier than what it typically would be, so you're going to see a lot more use of the Panzer Grins for capping. So by targeting that infantry half-track and not the infantry, what he's doing is he's delaying the Panzer Grins from really being able to go out and do the damage. I suppose you could say so. Um, I suppose it also works against them. I mean, the riflemen, you obviously saw that a few of them fell down there. Um, so if you're looking at time um, and capping power over resource loss, you know, I, I'm not sure. Maybe it balances out each other. Losing ground out there. And now yeah, we have the little it. Panzer Grenadiers inside the infantry half track. And they can still, at least two men from each of the squads can still shoot out of the top of the infantry half-track, and they shoot like they're standing still. So you definitely get some increased accuracy out of the whole process. I mean, you can see the damage that that does to that single rifle squad there. It's pretty cool. I've actually seen some uh, previous replays. Like, some people you do some really funny stuff with the infantry half-tracks. Like, they like to put, like, drive-by Panzer Shrek squads in them, and just absolutely funny stuff. Oh, it, yeah, it's definitely a clown car occasionally. And uh, you'll, you'll see Shreks in them chasing down M8s, Stewards. We got a rifle squad getting suppressed by the infantry half track, now on the retreat. Oh, but now we have very actually low health. HQ King cutting off. Um, all noobs are here at his cutoff point. So, as you guys can see, this cutoff point becoming very crucial. I mean, if the if, H, if uh, old noobs are here is not getting any resources, then that is a very big loss for him. Oh, and the rifle squad just barely gets away. Of course, now he's going to turn that infantry half track around and run up to that cutoff again, make sure that uh, he can get a hold of that fairly easily. That's right. And King uh, has his motor pull up, so I'm guessing he's either going to get an M8 or a pack out of that. Um, I'm guessing an M8 since that would uh, do better against, uh, or do actually quite decently against an infantry half track. Yeah, we have Shreks up from uh, Jim, but uh, he's floating quite a bit of manpower at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if we see, yep, and we do, just now a tank buster squad beginning to be built. So instead of spending the munitions on it, which he doesn't have anyways, um, so he's going to go ahead and spend the extra manpower. He actually, this is what I actually like about some uh, more experienced players, they actually recognize the hints and signs when uh, to get anti-tank. So as you guys can see, these riflemen have not been upgraded with bars by now. And that's an obvious sign that a motor pool and an, an early M8 is going to be coming out. So yes, funnily enough, we have an M8 being built. And so basically all noobs are here. It's just responded correctly by upgrading for those um, Panzer, Panzer Shreks. The only thing that I would do probably at this point, and that might be why he's better at this game than I am, is I would probably stop and uh, repair that infantry half-track, because with an M8 out on the field, even with a Shrek squad in it, um, you know, if that M8 takes that infantry half-track out, you're going to see a lot of damages and casualties to the squad members inside. And, uh, yeah, obviously you don't want to lose your guys in there. 
Um, but even just losing that infantry half track would be quite a bit of a loss. So yeah, definitely should get at least one squad trying to repair it. And it looks like he's going to do that now. That's good. And now all noobs are here actually has his uh, strategic point back up. Um, so he's not cut off anymore and he has those resources coming back in. But right now it's all really... He's also working on decapping the fuel as well. So just preventing um, HQ from actually getting any resources for further M8. Just delaying any future armor. So now we have a second M8 coming coming out, being instantly upgraded with skirts and an, uh, an MG on the top. So we're going to have two... And he just displayed the first one as well, and so, uh, you know, with the... Oh, jeez, this but armored car really taking out instantly. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> two shots. That is horrendously bad. Yeah, without without those skirts. But see, the thing is, is that he he waited to bring that M8 to bear until it had the upgrades and until it was uh, until it was there. But he already had the second build. But oh again, my god! Look at this M8. Even with armor skirts, taking very heavy damage. He really needs to get out of there. And oh, just barely dodging, being destroyed. One more Shrek shot should easily take it out. Now, Ryan, could you actually tell me? Um, you can only have one squad of Panzer Elite in uh, an infantry half-track, correct? No, he actually has two squads. I was waiting to say, because that's a bit funny. That I was waiting to say that's a bit funny, because he has two uh, Panzer Shreks, and I was just uh, thinking that the only other way is from uh, doctrinal abilities. So, oh, here we go, an, an eye for an eye. <laughs> Absolutely, although, uh, you know, uh, with the... With two M8s out from a single infantry half track and a couple of Panzer Shrek squads, it definitely puts the Panzer Elite player in a better position. I would actually have said that would be more like an eye for, uh, I don't know, an arm, to be honest. I mean, the M8 was totally upgraded, uh, the infantry half track just being destroyed, and the Panzer Elite guy is still alive. So, yeah, I think more heavily, heavy losses for the uh, Americans right now. Absolutely, and what you what you see at this point um, is, uh, you know, with a with tier two just kind of staying on the field. Um, of course, we have uh, we have a uh, minesweeper squad going down in the west, and it looks like we had the Schwimmwagen go down due to a rifle squad over on the fuel point. So just a little bit of casualties going right now. Um, King is actually gone for armor doctrine, so he has field repairs up. So. Just going to be capitalizing on long-term armor. Yeah, and and we see from the from the icon, I don't have any indication of it from the PE player, but from from clicking off of any unit, you can see on that on that iron cross there with the PE. Other than the fact that he's building tellers, that he is uh, going tank destroyer. He's also got a forward HQ and defensive operations up on that house just north of the center. And indeed he does. So is that an actually, do you think that's a good idea to have a forward HQ over there? Well, the nice thing about the Panzer Elite forward HQ is that even though you can't build units out of it, like like the American or the Wehrmacht, um, you do have the ability to heal from it, which means that you can stay in the fight for a great deal of time. And that's, that's exactly, that's a very good thing if you're able to heal. And here we go, a little little flame uh, squad coming up to it. But the Panzer Elite obviously knowing that they're going to take a lot of casualties from that. Just getting them out of there and pulling them back a bit, yet still being able to replenish their health. Yeah, and you see incendiary grenades upgraded and thrown at the flame.